Good morning. <clears throat> this month we're focused on a series, of, a series about commitment, and today we're looking at our commitment to, to God. Last week we talked about our commitment to one another, let's stay together. Today our commitment to God, and the sermonic title is Home Runs. Home Runs. I'm not talking about home run pizza either. <laughs> Auntie Mary Bell considers herself a survivor of genocide. So many committed suicide while others turned to alcohol. But she survived. She was eight years old when her mom took her and her brother to the train station. Her mom explained to her that she was going to go to a school with other girls. After that, she says, her mother didn't do any more explaining, but one day woke them up and took them to the train station. They rode and they rode for a long time, and then the sun went down. They still were on a train riding, and when they got to their destination, it was pitch black outside. There was a van there to pick them up that drove them to a school, and once at the school, they were separated. She recalls her brother, who depended on her crying and holding on to her, and yet they pulled them apart, and they sent her to a girl's dormitory and took him somewhere else she didn't know. When she got in the girl dormitory, all the girls were in bed. She was stripped of her clothing and given a set of clothes to wear and told to go to bed. In the bed, once sitting there quietly, she could hear other girls crying. The next morning when they awakened, the girls jumped on the floor and got on their knees. One girl whispered, hurry up or you will get whipped. After a while, she asked for her mommy and the sisters at this Place told her that her mom was not coming and that her mom had abandoned her. She knew in her heart of heart that this was not true. They cut her hair and for this she said she could never forgive them for her hair was such a part of her culture, a spiritual part of her culture. And now she thinks to herself her mom will never be able to find her because she looks just like the rest of the girls. The school was bad for her. They told her that there were devils that lived on her reservation, and when she was old enough, she should not go back. They trashed her culture. They tried to take the Indian out of the child, the adult Mary Bell reflects later in life. The boys were intoxicated. One girl disappeared who was impregnated by the priest, and she asserts that there were babies in the walls conceived by ill-gotten means. At 16, some girls decided to run away. This was the year she was to leave, so she felt like she didn't have nothing to lose. And so when they approached her and asked her, hey, you wanna go? She thought, okay. Well, they got, they walked and they walked and they walked and they felt kind of confident. They were getting further and further away. And every time a car came, they would jump into the trees and try to hide. And then the police came and they were caught and they begged the police, do not take us back. And they begged and they begged. And they were taken back. And she says when she looked in the police eyes, she thinks for a moment that he understood that they were in trouble. The nuns kissed them and acted like they were so glad to see them and were sweet to them. But once the police pulled off, they were sealed off in the classroom. And Mary Bell recalls she was beaten badly. She leaves at the end of the year, but she carried a lot of truth and pain with her. She has worked in the trenches of the Truth Reconciliation Commission in documenting the story of residential school survivors. She has worked hard to forgive, but she says, it ain't easy. You know something about that, don't you, Lucille? Tomorrow is Indigenous People Day. Tomorrow we lift up the experiences of Indigenous people in America. We can continue to honor tradition, which is what many of us want to do, or we can correct history. We recognize that while Columbus did get lost and he did discover this continent, he also brought disease and rape and death and genocide to a group of people that were already here. And on top of that, slavery. Many cities across the United States of America are recognizing this day, but ironically, Chicago is not one of those cities. Just this week, our city delayed voting because of the pushback they got from the Italian-American community. The resolution was debated in May and pushed back to October, and well, now it's been delayed for another year. 
So while tomorrow is Indigenous People Day for many states, for Chicago, it is still Columbus Day, recognizing the achievements of the 15th century Italian explorer, Christopher Columbus, who is still credited as discovering America in 1492. It's hard for people to give up their particularities even in the face of new information and new realities. It's hard for folks to give up their claims to specialness and attachment to things. At a former church, one of our members felt strongly about the Confederate flag. She felt strongly that her family had fought in this war, that there were members of her family. It was a source of contention at our church, but it did not matter to her that they fought on the Confederate side. She took pride that they had fought in the war and she had this flag. And it meant a lot to her, even if it brought pain to people in her congregation of a different hue. She hung it proudly and she could not let it go. I imagine the Italian Americans who have hung Columbus up as their hero are opposed to changing of the Columbus Day feel similarly. I imagine those who feel sentimental attachment to statues of people who protected a way of life that was exclusive to so many others may feel similarly. This is where we enter the biblical text today. Jesus hits a home run of the man inquiring about a righteous living and he tells him to give up his stuff. See, because folks feel some kind of way about their stuff. Wait a minute, you can touch this and this, but don't touch this. You can go this place in my house, but do not come over here. Our stuff will weigh us down. Stuff will put distance between you and others. Stuff will make you feel like you're right when actually you're dead wrong. Stuff will get you in trouble. So all the money, all that wealth, all that privilege, and all that intellectual prowess, just leave it and follow me, says Jesus. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me and you can hear a pin drop in the room. You can hear the man sinking. Leave it and follow me. And now we can hear the man leaving no more words, no more piousness. He just leaves. Tracy Chapman in her song Mountain of Things says, these words about possessions revealing how our stuff can distract us. Oh, they tell me there's still time to save my soul. They tell me, renounce all, renounce all those material things you gain by exploiting other human beings. Consume more than you need. This is the dream. Make you pauper or make you queen. I won't die lonely. I'll have it all prearranged. A grave that's deep and wide enough for me and all my mountain of things. This character in the text is not going to be separated from his wealth. The man in the Bible wants to hold on to the narrative of himself and Jesus hit a home run. The man inquires about his eternal home. What must I do? And Jesus says, you know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, teacher, I have kept all these since I was young. So Jesus is like, you want to take this road? Go sell your money and give what you have to the poor. Your wealth is a stumbling block. Your money is a stumbling box. Your reliance on your good education is a stumbling block. Your false humility is a stumbling block. Your clinging to the single narrative of history is your stumbling block. Your oppression and enslavement of other people is your stumbling block. He thought he was in, but he was out. He's skating on confidence and Jesus knocks the ball out of the park, home run. Every sport enthusiast knows when their team sends ripples of excitement through the sports arena and Jesus lets it rip, except there's no thunder of applause, but only the silence of one who is not willing or cannot or finds it hard to let go of their mountain of things. This is actually a painfully sad moment. Jesus knows how to peel back all the layers and reveal the cold, honest truth. It's hard for some of you to follow me and you can't follow me until you sever your ties with your stuff. 
What's keeping you from following Jesus? What's keeping you from the path? I was reading about the Taliban and they still scare me a whole lot. But what is interesting is their allegiance, their commitment to Allah. One guy had a wedding and he splurged big time on his son and he thought there was nothing too high and lofty for his son. This wedding was talked about in the region of Afghanistan and the Taliban set up court with him. And after hearing his report, they explained this did not please Allah. They do not believe in lavish spending. So much more could have been done with that money, they say. I will never know their motives and have access to the whole situation. And this is not an endorsement of the Taliban. Please don't get it confused. But at surface appearance, this notion of looking at wealth as a responsibility to others finds some parallel relationship to our holy text, the Bible. My son's school is having a running tournament for the upper level kids. They run several laps and my beloved has good time. He's getting excited about the tournament. They have three categories in his grade level, female, non-binary, and male. Now I told him, honestly, I went low. I said to get better chances, go ahead and enter in the non-binary. And he was like, but I'm not non-binary and other people are doing that. In this race, there's one male that's a little faster than him. He's in second place. And he's trying. One of the things about running is you can't be weighed down. When they run, these kids, they run with nothing holding them back. I imagine in our commitment to God, something similar should happen, that nothing should hold us back. At least in the text today, that's what Jesus says. Let go of all your stuff. Let it be of benefit to someone else. Hey, rich man, share the wealth. Hey, rich man, pay your taxes. Hey, rich man, you got enough to pay off the medical debt of others. Right now, $100,000 can purchase 10 million of medical debt. Hey, rich man, provide proper health insurance to the people that work for you. Hey, rich man, share the wealth. Do you see how others are living? And he couldn't do it. He couldn't let go of his wealth just as our country can't let go of the narrative of America. This month we are talking about commitment, but sometimes there are things, distractions. Anybody know anything about distractions? Because I feel them every day. In our way that challenge our commitment, that keep us from being really able to follow Jesus. What if the man had stayed? What if he had at least tried? What if he had reflected, what does it mean for me to share my wealth? What if he had said, yes, Lord, this is a hard cross, but yes, Lord, what if he had kept coming back? I'm not there today, Lord, but don't give up on me, Lord, because I might be there tomorrow. Can we talk about this, Lord? What would have happened if the man had stayed? What would have happened if he had at least tried? What would have happened if he fell on his knees? What would have happened if he let go? It's not the end of the world. Don't let the single narrative defeat you. Don't let your stuff rob you. Don't let your rigidness keep you from the path. The text today leaves us with three truths. I want you to get it. Three truths. Don't ask a question if you're not ready for the answer. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Two, assume the position of humility. Bragging will get you no points with God. And you have to be third, willing to hear another narrative. This morning, my commute, computer, when it pipes up, I don't know about you all, it informs me of what's happening the next day and the next day. And lo and behold, guess what popped up on my computer that's happening tomorrow? Two things popped up. One, it announced that it was Columbus Day tomorrow. And two, it announced to me that it was Indigenous Peoples Day tomorrow. And I chuckled to myself, there is room for more than one narrative. Columbus Day has been around for a long, long time. It's been around longer than us. We are slowly learning more and more about the impact of colonization on indigenous people. They are rising up and becoming advocates. They are exercising their voices. Their stories are powerful of how they were treated in America. Another narrative. 
when I first gave my life to the Lord, you guys may call it something else, in my culture, you walk down an aisle. The religious leader preaches a sermon, and after the sermon, the doors of the church are there open, and then they say, who would like to give their life to Christ? And in my teen years, I felt this tug, this pull of intentionality about my relationship with God. I felt like God was calling me to get up on my feet, and I knew then as I do now that this was a commitment that I was making. Perhaps some of you embarked on a similar journey, a similar path, a parallel truth. I knew as in the commandments read today that this commitment was caring about others and how my actions impacted the life of others. I knew I would have to make some changes. I couldn't just keep being the same old Charlene I was. I knew I would have to give up some things. And I knew, as I know now, that being a follower of Christ, I might even have to separate from some people. I knew it would require something of me. I knew that this commitment would change my life forever. And as I grew, I knew I couldn't just behave like I had. I knew I needed the Holy Spirit. I needed Jesus, and I needed God. Sell everything you have. Let it go. Get rid of what's standing in your way. And follow, 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 follow me. Amen. <laughs>